Hello everyone, this is Omar Alvarado of All About Rush yet again. And today we're going to do something similar to what we did in the previous video. I had so much fun doing that ranking Rush's albums video where, as you can see in front of us here, we have a ranking, a, a tier type ranking system that helped me to, without any notes, without any preparation, just sit down, list all of the albums as you see there in chronological order. And I ranked them based on how much I like them. And I, there were a lot of surprises. Like, for example, I didn't know, I didn't like 2112 that much <laughs> compared to the other albums. Um, I like 2112. But seeing the ranking in front of me, it made me realize that there were a lot of other records I liked more than 2112. And, you know, that caused some a little bit of an uproar in the community. <laughs> uh how can you not like 2112? I do like it. I like it a lot, but I like albums a lot more. But I didn't realize that till I did this exercise. So what I decided to do this time is to rank the records again, but not based on if I like them or not, or I like this one more than the other, but based purely on their sound, uh, be it how it was mixed, how it was mastered, the drums, the bass, the guitar, synthesizers, how everything sounds to me. And that's how I'm going to rank them. I'm going to try to keep my emotions aside as far as how much I like the record. And I'm going to rank these purely on how they sound. If I think this record sounds good, if I think this record sounds bad, well, bad from <laughs> in the rush, in rush them, bad means just it's that it's still rush. As you can see here in the what we have in front of us, I'm going to use the same tier ranking system that I did in the previous video. So we have... Elite, Superb, Great, Good, and It's Still Rush. Those are the five rows. And obviously, the top position will be right here. The first position in the Elite row. And the worst sounding Rush album will be down here, probably in the spot number 20. As I did in the previous ranking, I am including Feedback. Feedback is a studio release. It's official. So, hey, the Rush R30 tour resulted from that record. From that album so it counts and you know in my previous ranking it was dead last it's my least favorite rush record only because it has covers on it they're not rush original songs but this time yeah you might it, it might rank higher and we'll see where 2112 ranks as far as sound goes but that did have a bearing on how much i liked it in my previous ranking so as i mentioned just to go over we have the five rows Elite sounding, superb sounding, great sounding, good sounding, and it doesn't sound that great, but it's still Rush. <laughs> so let's see how this goes. Let's see how similar this ranking will be compared to my favorite Rush albums from worst to best, based on sound only, how they sound. And we're going to get this thing going right now. All right, so we have, as I mentioned chronologically ordered all of Rush's releases, all 20 of them. And we're going to start with Rush, the debut album. When it came out, it was elite, elite sounding, because it was the only record. So no matter how good or bad we think it sounds, it was elite at the time. So we're going to put that right at the number one spot, right at the outset. So here comes Fly By Night. I definitely like the sound of Fly By Night more than I like the sound of the Rush debut album. Actually, I don't think the Rush debut album sounds bad, but I think the way Neil Peart drummed in Fly By Night actually helps it sound better. And in general, I think, you know, it's mixed better. I think it just sounds overall better than the Rush debut album. Okay, so here comes the next album. Oops, I moved this down a little bit. I hate when I do that. There we go. Okay. Here comes Caress of Steel. Uh, I'm going to put it right there, number one. So, so far, the records are progressively getting better sounding. I really like the sound of Caress of Steel because it sounds, it sounds pretty natural. There isn't anything overly exaggerated. I think the sound is pretty well balanced amongst the three. I think the drums, particularly the, the lower toms in Neil's drumming, you know, probably could have been put out more forwardly, but I think overall, each one of the 
band members sound really good. You know, and, and Alex, I think he put on a clinic as far as being a rock guitarist, even though it was a very progressive record. But um, his acoustic guitar playing, his electric guitar playing, and you know the overdubs, uh, outstanding. I think I just think it sounded really good. So I think that deserves to be in the elite spot for right now. And here comes twenty one twelve, the much maligned by me, twenty one twelve in the previous video, but that's neither here nor there. I don't like the sound of 2112 very much. I think it sounds very different from every other Rush record. Very different. I think it was mixed. Something about it sounded kind of squelched as far as the guitars go. There, Of course, there are parts where the, you know, the guitars stand out. Absolutely. There's no question about that. But I just don't like the way it came out in the mix. And I have a complaint about the recording of Neil's drumming as well. For some reason, the floor toms, the lower sounding, as he progressed down, the volume of them was um, somewhat muted. And you can hear some of the snare drum buzzing instead of the actual lower tones of those lower bass, uh, lower toms. I think the bass drum sounded okay. I just think it had problems. It, that record is epic. So it's hard to, it's hard to criticize based on, you know, what it meant in the history of the band. But I just think it didn't sound that good. Now, so I do like Cress of Steel and Fly By Night better than 2112 as far as the sound goes. Do I like it even less than the debut album? Well, here's the thing. So, like I mentioned, I didn't prepare for this. I just, on a whim, I said, let me do this without preparation. What I feel. How do I feel these records sound? And some of these I haven't heard in a while. I'm um, just going by what I feel they sound, how I remember they sound, but I, I think I pretty much know very well how much he, how each one of these sound. As far as 2112, man, it's already, this is already tough. Between the Rush debut album and 2112, I'm going to have to say that for now, I'm going to put it last. I'm going to put it fourth. Now, again, just remember. This is just how these records sound to me, which sounded worst, which sounded best. Not talking about the greatness or the lack thereof of the records. So we're putting 2112 last for now. Okay, here comes A Farewell to Kings. I'm going to put it here for the moment. Uh, obviously, it's going to push one of the records in the elite level down to the superb level. Unless I consider A Farewell to Kings not as good as the other ones. Okay, I do like the sound of A Farewell to Kings... Um, but I think, again, the recording of the drums is a little light for me. I think it could have been heavier. I think the sound, both in Caress of Steel and Fly By Night, actually sounds better than A Farewell to Kings. Um, but I don't think it sounds... But I do think it sounds better than the Rush album. So what i got to do is i got to move 2112 down to the superb level. And I'm going to put... Uh, farewell to Kings right there in the number three spot. So as of now, Crest of Steel, as of 1976, <laughs> if, I was, if I was a fan back then, I would have thought that Crest of Steel was still the best sounding Rush record because of how balanced it was to me. Okay, and here comes Hemispheres. Uh, Hemispheres, great record. Actually, that's a great sounding record. Um, I actually think that it does overall sound better than caress of steel in this case as as well as I, as well balanced as i think caress of steel is recorded i think hemispheres is a more mature sounding mix i, I do think that caress of steel is a young sounding mix it just it sounds young it sounds fresh it sounds a little raw whereas hemispheres is a little more polished so I'm going to put that in the number one spot for now. So i got to move Rush, the debut album, down to the fifth spot. And let's bring Hemispheres to the number one spot. So this is how we look right now. Hemispheres is the best sounding record so far uh, after it came out. Uh, here comes Permanent Waves. I'm going to put it down here for the moment. Um, I do have my problems with the way Permanent Wave sounds as well. I think, uh, again, you know, I'm a, I'm a drummer as far as um, instruments go. 
and I've always thought that the drums could have sounded better on Permanent Waves. And the Permanent Waves does have its unique sound. Um, it's, it's, it's a good sounding record, but I think it lacks a little bit of power, ultimately. The lower toms are, are recorded better than, obviously, they were on 2112, I think. But does it sound... Okay, definitely sounds not as good as Hemispheres, I don't think. Um, that doesn't mean it sounds bad, I just think Hemisphere sounds better. Caress of Steel, I gotta be careful, because I have a soft spot in my heart for Caress of Steel. Do I think it sounds better than Permanent Waves? Yeah, I think I do think it sounds better. I just think because Caress of Steel, again, I think is a very good balance. And you can hear everything really well. Does it sound better than Fly By Night? Hmm. Actually, I don't think so. I think Fly By Night sounds better than Permanent Waves. So, does it sound better than A Farewell to Kings? Uh, that's, a, that's really tough. I think it's... Okay, so the, the battle is for the fourth spot. Because I do think, even though the Rush uh, uh, debut album, I think it sounds pretty good. I think... I think for sure, Permanent Waves sounds better. Uh, be, one reason is because the musicians are better. And when you play better, you sound better. And, you know, that helps a lot. Um, wow, this is tough. So, do I think Permanent Waves sounds better than A Farewell to Kings? Whoa. This is really tough. Actually, I'm going to say yes, it does. I think Permanent Waves ultimately sounds better. I think it's mixed better than A Farewell to Kings. Oh, I moved this again. I can't stand that. I mean, come on, Omar. Okay, so I'm going to bring A Farewell to Kings down, and I'm going to put Permanent Waves up in the fourth spot. Right, so here we go. We have... Here's what it looks like so far. Hemispheres, then Crest of Steel, Blood by Night, Permanent Waves. And then in the superb level, we have Farewell to Kings, the Rush debut album. And 2112 getting battered yet again. But again, how it sounds. Not the epicness of the records, right? Okay, so here comes what I call the giant moving pictures. Yeah, all right. So maybe it's a little surprise, but I'm not crazy about the, all of the sounds of moving pictures. I'm not crazy about it. Uh, for example, I think the drumming is mixed pretty well. I'm not crazy about the sound of the snare on this record. Um, most of it is really good, though. I mean, it is pretty good. Uh, I think it it is elite sounding at least up till this point um i think it sounds better than any of the three in the superb level here so the question is do i think it sounds better i, I do think it sounds better than permanent waves that i do do i think it sounds better than fly by I, I really like the sound of fly by night fly by night sounds pretty good um again i think it comes down to the playing elevates the sound. It overcomes what I think are some of the flaws of this record, which are few, but I just think the sound of the drums could have been mixed better. I think everybody, everything else sounds pretty good. I actually think the bass could have sound, uh, Getty's bass could have sounded a little better too on this. I think Alex sounds pretty flawless uh, on this record. So, again, I'm not saying it's bad sounding, but it is. It it sounds really good. So, I I think I'm gonna put it ahead of Fly By Night. And, but what about Caress of Steel? Actually, no. I I like the way the Caress of Steel sounds better than Moving Pictures. How about that? How about that? So let me do this. I'm gonna put Move Permanent Waves down to the superb level because I have to make room for. Moving pictures. Uh, I'm going to put it in the third spot. 
Now, this is very interesting. Looking at this, again, I wasn't thinking about this before. So, again, great set of, what a start for this band. What great records. As far as the way they sound, this is a, like a completely, uh, very different order from when I had it, as far as my favorites overall. So, in the elite row, as of now, we have Hemispheres in the number one spot, then Caress of Steel, Moving Pictures, number three, Fly By Night, number four. All right, go, good for you, Fly By Night. In the superb row, we have, at number five, Permanent Waves. We have, at number six, A Farewell to Kings. Number seven, The Rush debut album. And number eight, 2112. Hey, Gads. Uh, 2112. <laughs> All right, let's go to the Rush album called Signals. Let's put it there for the moment. Um, this is my favorite album of all. And one of the reasons that I love it is because I love the way it sounds. Uh, I do very much. I actually think it's better than any of these up here as of now. So I'm going to put it in the number one spot. And I'm going to bring Fly By Night to the superb level. That will push 2112 down to the great level. Now, the reason why I like the sound of Signals so much is because, first of all, it reminds me personally of Exit Stage Left. It sounds live. I think if you put a track of fans, you know, cheering and clapping and whatnot, it sounds like they're playing live. The bass guitar sounds really deep and really thick here the drums they, they sound very analog very natural uh in the on this record every i think every part of it is mixed perfectly i think um even though there's been complaints about alex's guitar playing not being more forward in the mix i think it fits the mood of this record i actually think alex sounds excellent in this record the way it's mixed could it could he been mixed up a little more to compete more with the synths that were blossoming on this record yeah probably but i th i feel i still think it sounds beautiful sounds perfect because again once again they're playing they're getting better and better whatever flaws that there were in the mixing is over it's overtaken by the musicianship of the members of the band um so for those reasons, I'm picking, as of now, Signals being the best sounding of the group so far. All right, here we go with the next record, Grace Under Pressure. In the previous video, I had my, I said I had some problems with the way this sounded. Not a lot, just a few. So where am I going to put it here? Uh, actually, I think I know. Hmm, do I know? Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I like the sound of Grace Under Pressure more than Permanent Waves. That I know. Do I like it more than Fly By Night? Um, I'm going to say yes, I do. I do like it more. Uh, I'm going to say that that's where it's going to be in the number five spot. Um, I think Moving Pictures... By a nose sounds better. Um, yeah, that's what I think. I'm gonna let's do some moving around and then maybe we'll talk a little more. So let me move the rush record down to the great level, uh, which pushes twenty one twelve even further down. And you know, when we put all these all this together, I'm gonna take one last look and see if I actually still believe what I'm looking at. It might be unbelievable, and I make some changes. Um, I think Grace of the Pressure is going to take the number five spot away from Fly By Night. Um, I'm actually proud of Fly By Night's doing pretty well. So I think that there's actually, I think, a pretty good mix here, even though Alex makes a rebound as far as his guitar sound from Signals. I think it's much more forward here, but I think it all works pretty well. I think, um, even though I don't think. Neil's drumming sounds as good as it does in Signals. Sounds pretty good still. Everything sounds pretty good. Uh, the bass, you know, is not as pronounced. And, you know, as in um, Signals. Uh, I think Giddy at this time is starting to change the bass guitars that he's using. But um, 
yeah, I think it fits here at the very pretty well at the number five spot, right below moving pictures. Okay, next up is Power Windows. It is a fan favorite. But how does it sound to me? How does it sound to me? Well, actually, you might be surprised to think that I don't think too highly of the sound. Um, the songs are great. Again, we're not talking about how great the songs are. I think we're just not, not I think we are just talking about how good does it sound? And I don't think it's an elite sounding record. As so far, I think it will be a superb sounding record, I believe. Because I think it does sound better than uh, it does sound better than a farewell to kings. I think it does sound better than permanent waves. Does it sound better than fly by night? Uh, actually, I think it does. Because I, I do think Power Windows is very well produced. And all of the musicians, they stand out. And I think it's a better mix than Fly By Night. Now, the question is, does it sound better than Grace Under Pressure? Um, actually, I'm going to say it does not. I think Grace Under Pressure sounds a little better than Power Windows. So let's move a Farewell to Kings down to the great level. And we're going to put Power Windows at number five. Well, let me do that. Let me move it over here. There we go. All right. So Power Windows bumps Grace Under Pressure out of the number five spot. Oh, no, that's not what I'm saying. Hold on. Let me back up. No, this is what I wanted. What am I saying? I think Grace Under Pressure sounds better. Oh, I meant to say that I was going to put it in front of Fly By Night. That's what I meant to say. So Power Windows, to me, does sound better than Fly By Night. But Grace Under Pressure ekes it out as far as how good it sounds. I think it does sound a little better than Power Windows. Okay, so next comes Hold Your Fire. Um, actually, I don't. I'm not crazy about the sound of Hold Your Fire. Um, I think it sounds. I'm trying to think of. Let's just say it's not balanced. I would say not as balanced as definitely not as Caress of Steel. Um, I think it sounds a little shrill. Um, I think it's more trebly more than bass. And I think it sounds more that way. So there's, I think, a lack of balance there. Now, here we go. Now, my issue is, I think, from permanent waves down, there's, um, you know, I have problems with those records. Um, and then Fly By Night Up, I don't have very many problems with those records. So I think we're going to vie... This one is going to vie for the eighth spot with permanent waves. Do I like the sound of permanent waves better? Yeah, I think I do. And you know what? I think I like the sound of a farewell to Kings better than hold your fire. Again, hold your fire has great songs, but I'm not crazy about its sound. I don't think it was mixed correctly. I think power windows I think it should have sounded a little more like Power Windows, basically. I think Power Windows was pretty pretty good. So, does it sound better than the Rush debut album? I'm going to say, yeah, it does. Barely. Um, you know, definitely, as, as good as I think the Rush debut album sounds, um, it does show its immaturity, I would say, as far as a finished product. So, I'm going to put hold your fire right there in the what is it the 10th spot and it pushes rush to the 11th spot and 21 12 to the 12th spot again i'm going to reevaluate all of these when i'm done okay so here comes presto oh that moved a little bit sorry about that 
I think I should be up here. All right, so presto, right? Let's uh, let's move it here for the moment. Uh, here's where you're gonna have the next couple of records that sound a little tinny, not very, let's say, fleshed out. Um, however, I think the quality of the playing, the quality, I think the 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 actually the melodies of this record, it might sound contradictory to what I've been saying, but I think the melodies of this record actually augment how it sounds. Not the best recorded. I think that this one and the next one, you know, show how not well it, they were recorded. But I do like the sound, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, I think I do like the sound of Presto more than Hold Your Fire. So it's going to bump at least that one down. Um, but how far up is it going to go? This one's, oh, this one's difficult. Because I'm, I'm trying to divorce myself from how much I like the record. I'm just trying to think of how it sounds. And, man, this is tough. Do I like it better than Permanent Waves? That is the problem here. <laughs> um, I'm not crazy about the way Permanent Wave sounds. Um, but do I like it better than A Farewell to Kings? I'm not crazy about the way Farewell to Kings sounds per se. Uh, okay, you know what? I think uh, I know what I'm going to do. Unfortunately, 2112 has to move down to the good level. Yikes. And I think I'm going to put Presto right ahead of A Farewell to Kings. For now. I do think, I do concede that Permanent Wave sounds better. Yes. Um, I think there, there's an airiness to Presto that's a little too airy and not very grounded. It's kind of like, you know, kind of floating around these songs are. And the drums, they sound a little light. Um, yeah. So I, I think it's good right there where it is. It does. I do think it sounds better than A Farewell to Kings. We'll see about that at the end when everything is together. But anyway, let's go to the next record. Roll the Bones. Yeah. I have a lot of problems with Roll the Bones. Um, I think particularly... Because it sounds so light, so tinny. Um, yeah, I, I actually, I think 2112 is going to be happy. I think I'm going to put it way down at the end for now. It is last. I think the sound in twenty in um, Roll of Bones is, is just not good. Now, I know there's some remasters of some of these, or maybe all of these. But um, I didn't even think the remaster could could do it unless it was kind of like remixed as we'll see uh in an upcoming record but um yeah roll the bones just sounds too tinny it sounds too light it sounds like like rush is receding into a a sound corner and like they're like running away and someone needs to pull them back and that's exactly what happens with the next record counterparts um Man, this is a great sounding record. Really, really good. This is probably going to be an elite sounding record. They did a complete reversal from Roller Bones. Um, very meaty sounding. I mean, the, the bass is heavy. Neil Pierce's drums sound absolutely fantastic. From, um, from the higher toms all the way down to the floor toms, bass and cymbals. And uh, Getty and Alex sound really good. I mean, here's this is probably, you know, the mature version of Caress of Steel. I, mean, I think there was a nice balance in Caress of Steel. I think there was a nice balance in Counterparts, except heavy. Very heavy. Now, it's going to contend with Signals as the best sounding. Um, and I think, actually, I'm going to put it at number one for now. So i got to do some rearranging here. So let's bring Rush down here to the good level. Let's bring Permanent Waves down to the great level. 
And moving pictures down to the superb level. Hmm, that might be a little controversial there. We'll have to see. So let's bring counterparts to the number one spot for now. As of now, it is the best sounding record. It really, I don't think that's a, a dispute as how good it sounds. Whether you like it or not, whether if it's one of your favorite records or not, it definitely, that record, the way they mixed it and recorded it and mastered it, affected the rest of their records. I mean, they could not go back to the way they sounded on Roll the Bones or Presto. It was like this. And pretty much, pretty much the records after this sounded similar to uh, this one, to Counterparts. Because, I mean, this is what Rush should sound like. It, it was that good. So, yeah, number one best recording as of this moment. Okay, so Test for Echo comes in. And regardless of if you like it or not, I think Test for Echo also is a great sounding record. Really good. Um, actually, thinking about it now, it sounds better than I th thought it did. I mean, it's a really groovy record. You know, when Neil switched to traditional grip, I'm telling you, the the quality of the musicians affect the quality of the sound. If the musicians are playing good, they're going to sound good. They can make a crappy record sound good. <laughs> Except for one, which we're going to see. That they had to actually redo the whole thing. But, yeah. I mean, they sound fantastic on Test for Echo. Fantastic. Um, does it sound... I mean, it. I think it's an elite sounding record as of now. So, the question is, does it sound... Okay, it definitely sounds better than Caress of Steel. It definitely sounds better than Hemispheres. I'm starting to think of Hemispheres should be up there. <laughs> At all. Let's see. Uh, well, I do have to move some things around. So I need to bring Hold Your Fire down to the good level. I need to bring Fly By Night down to the great level. I mean, Fly By Night's holding its own. I'm proud of it. <laughs> um... Okay. Oh, and I have to move Crest of Steel down to the superb level. As good as I think it sounds. Yeah, there are others that sound better. All right. So my issue is if it sounds not, nah, I think Counterpart sounds better. Does it sound better than Signals? Hmm. That's a tough question. I have to try to forget that Signals is my favorite record. But one of my reasons that it's my favorite record is how it sounds. Uh, yeah. Dang. You know what? I think it does sound better than Signals. I concede. I think Test for Echo. Uh, that goes out here. I think Test for Echo sounds better than Signals. So I'm going to have to move it up to the number two spot. Interesting. All right. I'm going to leave that as is. This is looking very interesting. Hmm. I might have to rearrange a couple of things. I'm not sure if it looks right. Okay. Anyway. Next record. Oh. Vapor Trails. Now, we have the original mix. The original release that came out in 2002. And, you know, I think the members of Rush thought that it sounded so not like the way they liked it that eventually they gave in and they remixed it and in 2013 we got the remix and very glad that they did because that original one you know what if it was if i had it on this list it would be last it'd be dead last it just would be last <laughs> uh but this actually I think it's, as of now, an elite-sounding record. Absolutely. So, it's gonna. this is going to move a bunch of things around. So, let's bring Roll the Bones down to the It's Still Rush level, where it deserves to be. And we have a Farewell to Kings. Oh, it's down to the good level. Dang. Here we go with Power Windows. Going to move it down here. Um, yes, uh, I think it does sound, I think the remixed version of Vapor Trails sounds better than Hemispheres. So I'm going to move that down here. The question is, where in this row does it belong? 
I mean, it sounds really good. But you know what? I'm going to put it at number four after Signals. Reason being is as good as the remix is, as good as it sounds, um, it's not perfect. Um, I think that Neil Peart's snare sounds a little too fat. Definitely different than I think he would have recorded it any other time. And it does sound different. That's just something that stands out to me. But, you know, being the drummer that I am, like I mentioned. But I think everything else came out really well. I mean, the reason that I did that drum cover of Nocturne from this record is because when the remix came out, I could hear everything. I could hear everything Neil was doing. I could hear what, all, what the, all, all the other guys were doing, too. But because, you know, I did, I recorded me, I co- recorded drum covers and I always wanted to do one from Vapor Trails and I want, wanted to do Nocturne. But when it came out in 2002, I was like, I can't really, I can't really decipher what's going on. And there's no video of Neil playing Nocturne. So I had to figure it out. But when the remix version came out, I could hear everything. It was crystal clear. It's like, oh, I can do this. Well, I mean, with practice, I could somewhat do it. I think it came out okay. You can check it out. But yeah, the remix version of Vapor Trails deserves an elite status as of right now. Okay, so here comes the what I much aligned in the previous video. Uh, feedback. Now, from a favorites perspective, uh, you know, I, I, it was last. But from a sound perspective, it sounds really good. Definitely sounds really good. Sounds modern, but like not modern pop modern, like just the evolution. I'm telling you, counterparts changed the way Rush mixed their records after Roll the Bones. Nothing could go. They can go backwards. They had to go. It had to sound like somewhat counterparts ish. Um, feedback sounds really good. And I, um, I actually think it sounds better than Vapor Trails, the remix. Yeah, because they didn't, I mean, they did it, recorded it right the first time. And maybe, I think Vapor Trails overreached a little bit. I think, actually, Vapor Trails should have sounded, ultimately, kind of like the way feedback sounds. Um, that's what I think. So, what I'm going to, because they were recorded kind of not too far away from each other. So... Okay, so there's going to be a lot of movement here because I'm actually going to put feedback up in the elite level. Oh, how about that? Okay, so let's bring... Oh, man. Rush is... 2112 is back down to the... It's still Rush. But I'll get to that in a moment. So we're going to bring Presto down to the good level. Okay, yeah, that's sure, that's fine. Uh, Grace Under Pressure down to the great level. And the Vapor Trails remix down to the superb level. I think feedback belongs up here in the elite it sounds it sounds that good um even though it's not my it's my least favorite rush record but as far as sound goes sounds great all right so now that we did that we got two more here comes snakes and arrows let's put it there for now snakes and arrows um it sounds good (laughs) um if I remember it, um, yeah, it sounds pretty good. I'm going to say it sounds better than Vapor Trails. Even the remix, perhaps. <laughs> I think it's a battle between... Actually, I think the battle is for the sixth spot for Hemispheres, where Hemispheres is now. Um, yeah. This is what I'm going to do. I am going to put it in the sixth spot, but I have to move everything. So let's bring this down here. And we're going to bring permanent waves down here to the good level. We're going to bring moving pictures down to the great level. Yikes. Holy smokes. Right. So the elite level is going to stay as is. And I think I'm going to put snakes and arrows. Sounds better than... Yeah, I think it sounds better than Vapor Trails Remix. I, I think, again, because they learned their lesson, pretty much, after after Vapor Trails. They learned the lesson. So then they recorded 
Uh, feedback sounds really good, much better than the original mix of Vapor Trails. And then, you know, ultimately, Vapor Trails was released remixed, and it sounds much better. And I think that's that's the official r- release to me, not the original. I think the original mix was a, a mistake. And I think they know it because that's the only one they've remixed, right? All right. So, but I do think I do think Snakes and Arrows sounds it's a more natural mix than the Vapor Trails remix. All right. Last but certainly not least, we got Clockwork Angels lurking there. The last record. Uh, I don't think it's the best sounding record. Um. Yeah, I don't think it's the best sounding. I actually think it's possible. Yeah, I think um, I think it'll reside in the superb level somewhere. All right. It I think it does sound better than Cress of Steel. I do. Um, does it sound better than Hemispheres? Hmm. See, the thing with hemispheres is it's not that it's the so great sounding, but just the the mood of the, of that record, the the uh I don't know, the timbre of that record. I don't know how to describe it. It's just it sounds a certain way that makes it sound epic. <laughs> it's just that there are these other recordings that I think just sound better. Um so so much better that it ekes hemispheres out it you know as as good as the musicianship is and you know i think la via strangiato on hemispheres you know i don't think it's the best sounding version of la via strangiato so that brings it down a bit but overall great sounding record especially uh book two hemispheres that's really what elevates it um Okay, actually, I gotta, no, that makes me think of something. We'll go back to it. All right, Clockwork Angels. Let's stop dilly dallying. Um, dang, it is tough though. I'm gonna say that Clockwork Angels sounds better than better than the Vapor Trails remix, but I think I think Snakes and Arrows ekes it out barely. So let's bring Hold Your Fire down to the it's still rush level. And fly by night, man. It started off great. It went down with all these great sounding records. Uh, Caress of Steel moves down to the great level. Right. So here's Clockwork Angels. I think it ekes out Vapor Trails for that sixth spot. So I think the sixth spot has been a contended spot mostly in this exercise. All right. So here we are. We have the 20 records listed now one more look at it to see if i actually agree with what i you know with what i'm saying here let's see um i think the elite row is good counterparts test for echo signals and feedback those might be the best sounding yeah i'm gonna leave that at that for the moment then we've got the superb row we have snakes and arrows Clockwork Angels, Vapor Trails Remix, and Hemispheres. I think we can leave that like that for now. Hmm. Do I want to leave that like that for now? Do I think Caress of Steel sounds better than Hemispheres? Or not as good as how I see it here in front of me? Um. Hmm. Interesting. Actually... This is difficult. Is do I think Hemisphere sounds better than Caress of Steel? Yeah, I do. I think the drumming is recorded better on Hemispheres. And Caress of Steel, it sounds natural, but I think just a tad distant. Not uh too immediate. But uh yeah, I think that's a that's a good spot. Do I think Caress of Steel sounds better than moving pictures? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> so I'm going to move it up. 
But do I think Hemisphere sounds better than Moving Pictures? Hmm. Do I think Hemisphere sounds better? No, I don't. Thinking about it, no. So I'm going to bring Rush to the 8th spot. And bring Hemispheres down. Yeah, that's better. Uh, I do think... Yeah, I do think the Vapor Trails remix sounds better than Moving Pictures. I think all of these above Moving Pictures sound better than Moving Pictures. All right, I, I can live with that. Yes. Curse of Steel sounds better than... Grace Under Pressure? Mm. I'm trying to be realistic here because I'm going to forget about my love for Chris of Steel for a moment. Um, does it sound better? Hmm. <laughs> I'll leave, I'm going to leave it like that for the moment um, because these two are... Yeah, I do think... Yeah. I think Chris of, um, Chris of Steel... I think Grace Under Pressure sounds better than power windows because i think i think power windows also overreached a little bit in as as far as making as far as the it sounds very expansive yes it sounds big everything's big on that record you know big money the big bang but i think a little too big <laughs> um compared to grace and the pressure i think grace and the pressure sounds a little better so I'm going to leave that like that. Yeah, and I will take Power Windows over Fly By Night. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, okay, Permanent Waves. As great as that record is, do I think it sounds better? Not as good as Fly By Night? Um, yeah, I think Fly By Night sounds better. How about Presto? Yeah. Yeah, Presto is where it belongs. I think Grace, uh, I do think Permanent Wave sounds better than Presto because Presto was, again, a little too light. Yeah, it was too light. Um, yeah, and I do like it better than A Farewell to Kings. I think A Farewell to Kings has some problems about the the drumming, again. I'm not, not crazy about the way it sounds. I don't like the way it sounds on Closer to the Heart. I don't like the way it sounds... Uh, in general, <laughs> I think it sounds pretty light. It could have been darker, heavier, grittier. Uh, I think the bass sounds good. I think Alex's guitars very different from Twenty One Twelve. Yeah, better in a better in a better way. So I think that's fine where it is. Um, do I think A Farewell to King sounds better than Hold Your Fire? Um, yeah, I'm not crazy about the sound of Holy Fire. I'm just, I'm just not. So, I think that's right where it needs to be. I do think it sounds better than the Rush debut album. I think the Rush debut album... Hmm. Does it really sound better than 2112? Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> so, I'm gonna move this up. Do I think 2112 sounds better than... Hold your fire. Hmm. Yeah, not crazy about the sound of Hold Your Fire. I think I'm gonna well, I mean, 2112 is powerful. That I'll give it. You know what? Because of that, I'm moving it up. If it'll let me, yeah. I think because 2112 is such a powerful such there's a lot of power there. And there's practically no power. <laughs> and hold your fire. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it down there. So, uh, twenty one twelve. It's in the uh, what is it? Seventeen. Yeah, seventeen spot. And hold your fire will be number eighteen. The Rush debut album, number nineteen. And the worst sounding record is Roll the Bones. Okay, I think we have it. So, here it is. So, in the it's still Rush row number twenty. Roll the Bones, number 19, the debut album, number 18, Hold Your Fire, number 17, 2112. In the good row, we have at number 16, 
A Farewell to Kings, and number 15, Presto. Number 14, Permanent Waves, and number 13, Fly By Night. In the great row, great sounding records. In the 12th spot is Power Windows. In the 11th spot, Grace Under Pressure. In the 10th spot, the top 10, Crest of Steel. In the 9th spot, Hemispheres. And in the superb row, these are superb sounding records. Moving Pictures at number 8. Vapor Trails, the remix at number 7. Clockwork Angels, number 6. Snakes and Arrows, number 5. And for the Elite Sounding Rush Records, number four, Feedback. That's a shocker right there. Number three, Signals. Number two, Test for Echo, making it to the Elite level. And the number one best sounding record is Counterparts. All right, that's it. That's my ranking of Rush's worst to best sounding records. I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you you liked how I figured everything out. And hopefully this will serve as something for you to do too. Give you an idea of using this tool here, this tier maker ranking tool, so that you can put everything in front of you. Instead of maybe doing things one by one, uh, maybe doing a, pre a, a prepared list, you can just do this right on the fly and just put stuff in front of you and rank them right as you see them, as they come. And you might surprise yourself also to realize that you might not like the way this sounds as much as you thought you did. Maybe you, you thought you liked it, but when you rank them in this way, you may see that you think differently. I'm definitely surprised as well as what I see here as far as how the records sound, but I think it's uh, pretty solid. If you like this method of ranking and you found this pretty interesting, why don't you thumbs up to this video? Hopefully you can you'll subscribe as well. I'd appreciate that very much. Hope to have you on board. This is Omar of All About Rush, and I will see you in the next video.